please excuse me while I enjoy this quiet moment in my house. <laughs> guys so again we're discussing of poseidon by anna banks and if this is your first time on my channel then hi welcome to my channel and if you are coming back thank you for coming back if you don't know this is the oh goodness third episode where we discuss this book and this is the ninth episode of this series in total so yes this is a very spoilery series so if you don't like spoilers and you haven't read the book, I would suggest you hop off unless you're okay with spoilers. But we're just going to dive right in because these tend to be very, very long and detailed. So yeah, I went out and bought new tabs, guys, because like I told you, I ran out. So now we're on pink tabs and there's only 40 in a pack. So I bought two because 80 is enough, right? Yeah, definitely not. I am going to run out of tabs like crazy. So I'm going to have to figure out a new way to do this because... This just isn't practical. My wallet cannot handle continually buying new tabs. So maybe I'll reuse them. We'll see. We'll see what's going to happen. But let's get started. Galen has in Reyna have gone to visit Grom and their father and they left Torf to watch over Emma. And Emma is being defiant, which I kind of love about her personality because Galen is always trying to order her around and she's always just like, no. So she's getting in the water after he told her not to get in the water and somewhere out of nowhere she senses another Serena like she senses them and she's like oh my gosh and she's in her dialogue where she's like what if they have killers and rapists like humans do then what this was a dumb idea I should have listened to Galen which really pissed me off because like no don't let him boss you around but also the whole scene was just funny because the whole time i knew it was torf and i felt like she should have guessed it was torf because no other serena knows that she even exists but no she's just freaked out and she like runs to shore but torf grabs her and the whole scene is just odd because torf grabs her leg and drags her back in the water and he's in blended form so she can't see him you would think that he would try to like understand like oh she probably doesn't know it's me i should probably make myself known instead of just dragging her off to sea like i'm trying to drown the girl but no he just drags her like halfway to rachel's house i'm guessing and then finally surfaces and is like emma it's me and she's like dude why didn't you tell me it was you from the beginning and he literally says who did you think it was I don't know you're dragging her out to the middle of the ocean and you're expecting her to know that it's you of course she's not gonna know like she should have I feel like like I said she should have guessed it but you still should have made yourself known because anybody else would think you're trying to kill them and since she doesn't know much about your species that would be the automatic assumption like oh my gosh this guy's trying to kill me or girl whatever anyway moving on to the next tab which this whole freaking like i don't even know how many pages i have marked but like this whole sequence of events that occurred just have me like dying honestly it's just it's let's just talk about it so emma gives torf advice to play hard to get that's not even what i wanted to discuss and before i forget why do I feel like Reyna is like a little mermaid with an attitude? Because she collects human stuff, which reminds me of the little mermaid because look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? But she's like an a-hole and a B-I-T-C-H. I'm not going to say the word. So yeah, but I had to mention that. Now, I was like, yeah, play hard to get. Act like you don't want to be with her. And basically these tabs are literally just me marking that Torf takes this advice to heart so quickly and it's so weird because he didn't even know what hard to get meant and he literally played it off so amazingly like it was almost hurtful to me the way he played it off like eh. he was like he kisses emma mind you and i'm this not this isn't even the tab i marked we're just way we're way past the tabs right now because i'm just talking and remembering things so okay he kisses emma right and galen guys Galen like attacks him full on attacks him mind you he's not attacking him because he kissed Emma and he's Raina's mate he's attacking him because he kissed Emma and he knows that he loves loves likes Emma 
like just forget his sister right like because his love life is all that really matters that's the only reason he's attacking him the whole time he's attacking him though Torif makes no effort to fight back he's just getting punched and beat up and I find that that's so common in this book like I feel like Galen has punched Torif so many times Torif has punched Galen so many times and they just laugh it off because you know physical violence is so normal in their species I guess yeah that's a little strange but whatever and then Emma inserts herself into it like literally jumps between Galen and Torf because she has no regard for her life or anything like oh I have she found out she has hard bones so now she's like yeah I'm gonna jump between these two guys fighting oh <gasps> like that okay <laughs> and so Galen then has to focus on Emma and he's like oh god no don't hurt yourself why would you do that don't do that of course again with the bossing her around thing I'm just, I'm trying to go through this stuff pretty quickly because there's really not a lot of in-depth stuff that really pissed me off. It's just more like, <laughs> so then Galen has this whole inner monologue where he's like, oh my gosh, I should have kissed Emma before I left. I can't believe her and Torf bonded like that. Torf betrayed me. Torf did this. Torf did that. Why would he do that? He would never do that. And he's like conflicted in his head. Like he has no idea what's going on. And it's so funny because literally, is it the next page? Yes, literally on the next page, Emma just bursts out laughing. Like, she's just, like, dying of laughter. And Galen is just like, what the heck is wrong with you? Like, he, he can't comprehend. He's like, why would you kiss him? Why are you laughing about it? Like, you think it's funny? And then she has to explain to him that she told Torf to play hard to get. Mind you, Torf literally might as well have just ripped right his heart out because he literally brushed past her like nothing happened he was like yeah i kissed emma she's cute you unsealed us anyway you don't want to be together we're better off not together i'm actually gonna unseal us myself and then he just jumps into the water and takes off like dead serious and i'm just trying to figure out like how he caught on to that so quickly how he was able to go from so sweet and funny and like sarcastic to just like full-on ignorant and just like i don't give a f about you attitude I mean, I can't be mad at it because the portrayal of it was so perfect. Like, it was literally like he went to acting school. It's unrealistic as heck, but it's very funny to read. And it just is very refreshing. So I can't be mad at it. But anyway. <laughs> so yeah, they go back and forth about it. And then Galen is like, well, he kissed my, my, and Emma just goes, you're what? And Galen literally says, student. as if he could dig himself deeper into this hole like poor Emma because Emma is just like really mind you the insta love thing is something that again I have a love-hate relationship with because this is so insta lovey still because they haven't even been knowing each other for that long but Emma's so hurt that he says this but I can't even be mad at the insta love right now because this this I don't even I can't even say chapter but this little scene is just so hilarious to me and just like it just made me want to keep reading because it was just like uh, this is so refreshingly funny anyway he's thinking that Torf kissed her to make him jealous but no it was to make Raina jealous and he doesn't understand that on the next page though I really love I love Emma's personality because like even though the insta love and stuff is annoying, like her personality is like so like fight backish because she's like, you're not gonna order me around. And she literally does not care that he's a royal. She's just like, whatever. And her temper is so quick. Like it's like, it's on point. I love it. And so Galen basically asked her if she liked the kiss and like her response, let me just read it to you because I was just like, Ooh, okay girl, like, yes. So, he asks her, did you like it? And she says, with her hands on her hips, just had to add that in. Do you remember Mr. Pinner Galen, world history? And he's like, I'm paraphrasing. He's like, yeah, but what does that have to do with this? And she's like, tomorrow's Monday. When I walk into Mr. Pinner's class, he won't ask me how I like Torf's kiss. In fact, he won't care what I did for the entire weekend because I'm his student, just like I'm your student. And then she walks, she walks off. 
Like she picks up her stuff and walks off and he's like, wait. And she's like, nope, I'm sick of waiting for you, bye. And that's literally how that scene ends. And it is life. It is every freaking thing that I just love because I just love that she's not falling all over him. Like she's not letting, she's letting him kind of get to her, but the way she's handling it is just perfect. She's just like, you know what, F you. She might as well be saying that because that's what she, that's what she means by what she says. And moving on. A booktuber, I think, or a reviewer on Goodreads commented on this next part that I'm going to discuss where Torf comes back and he tells Galen that him and Reyna found an island, which if you've been watching, that means they're about to mate. Mind you, the whole entire time, Reyna has literally been like hating on him. So yeah. <laughs> Somebody was like, oh, she's been hating on him this whole time, but now all of a sudden they're going to go find an island and mate. It didn't really bother me that much just because I don't want to say that Reyna was playing hard to get because I hate the concept of somebody being mean to you is somebody wanting to be with you because it's just not true. However, I just think that Reyna was thinking that Torf was always going to be around and she just wasn't ready when he was ready. And she wanted her own time and her own space and her own singleness, I guess you could say, to do what she wanted to do without being tied down to him. But I think that she really did care about him because they do say that they were best friends, you know, from the beginning. And she was just kind of didn't want to ruin that. But it broke her heart when she saw him with somebody else. And sometimes that's real life. Like, sometimes it takes the person seeing you with somebody else to make them realize that they don't want you to be with anybody else. And I know that sounds so bad, but let me explain. Like, when you think somebody's always going to be around, you tend to take it for granted. If you see somebody that you care about with someone else, sometimes it does make you realize that you do want to be with them forever. Like, you do want a relationship with them. And honestly, it happens. It happened with me and my husband. We were friends for three years before he actually wanted to start dating me. And it was because I actually started dating someone else kind of in front of him. But again, I knew that I liked him and like he liked me, but he was very distant because he was a player and a heartbreaker. And I can say this because we've discussed it, but him seeing me with somebody else really bothered him, hurt him. And I mean, we've been married for two, almost three years now and we have a one year old daughter. So I mean, it does happen and you don't need to attack me because it's happened to me personally. So yeah, moving on guys. Moving on. So Torv tells Galen that he sensed a Serena that he's never met before and it led to Emma's house. Now Common Sense would tell you, I've read this book before like I said so this is nothing new, but Common Sense would tell you that it was Nalia, Emma's mother, but they don't know that. But if it led to Emma's house and there's only one other person that lives with Emma, it would have to be that person, wouldn't it? Common Sense. Anyway, they don't they don't get this they think it's somebody trying to attack emma or do something to emma or steal emma or something so galen after torf finally gets free and i don't want to make guys galen is like torf don't go back to that island i need you to go hunt down paka because she's got the gift of poseidon they say and if she can get with grom oh he says i'll make sure she gets with grom so that i can have emma i don't know if those are exact words let me check because whew, he says, I'm going to make sure she's Grom's mate instead of Emma. Okay, so he doesn't say so he can get with Emma, but that's what he's hinting at. So he wants Torv to leave the love of his life, who's finally agreed to settle down with him to go hunt this girl down. And Torv says yes, because he's a great friend and an awesome person. Because that would have been like, dude, really? It begins, guys. The hunt for Paka, or however you say her name, begins. And I literally cannot wait to figure out, does she have it? Because I literally can't remember... So, we're going to wait and find out together, I guess. But the fact that he says he's going to make sure she mates with Grom really bothers me. Because, like, up to this point, we've never met her. We don't know who she is. Nobody's even asked her what she wants because she just disappeared. So, yeah, I really don't know what I'm supposed to say about that. Other than, like, he only wants to make sure she mates with Grom so he can have Emma. And to me, that's so possessive and I don't really like it because it's like Emma should have her own choice. Even though she's already made it, like you should be asking her if she actually likes you. 
but that's not how this species cooperates and works because a normal person would be honest and be like hey I like you and see where that goes but because Emma belongs to his brother right now Galen can't do that so he keeps pushing her further and further away and basically hurting her in the process and in the end I think they do get together I can't recall how it happens or anything so they throw it out the window anyway and that's usually how these love stories go like they just throw all the odds away whatever who cares about this or this we're gonna be together so I mean it's nothing new but anyway the last marker I have because we're at 15 minutes of course just says that Emma comes up with this theory that her hitting her head is what caused her to kind of she says triggered her Serena instincts which I find believe like I knew that but it's kind of unbelievable that she's never hit her head before because how many times do babies and kids hit their heads honestly maybe not that hard like concussion hard but the fact that the book is trying to say oh I had to get a concussion for my instincts to kick in like something in my brain just snapped like no because it's a species thing it's not a brain thing like that doesn't make any sense I feel like that's unnecessary in this book like you could have just said that it took her 18 years for her instincts to kick in instead of saying oh me hitting my head is what made it happen because 18 years for her instincts to kick in would have been more believable and made a little bit more sense than oh I got a concussion so now it's kicking in that I'm a completely different species I can't roll my eyes enough I can't roll my eyes enough Anyway, guys, that's going to be it for this installment because we are at 17 minutes. And if I record another installment today, it's going to be probably just as long. And then that will be over 30 minutes. And I'd rather just break it down into nicer chunks for you guys so that you're not overwhelmed. But we are on page 180 out of... Doo -doo 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 out of 326 pages. So we are well over I would say halfway through this book so I will keep you guys posted and updated like I said I got new stickies and I'm gonna keep sticking this book and by the time it's done it's gonna look like a rainbow because yeah so I will catch you guys in the next episode of this series and we will still be discussing of beside and I'm sorry it's been going on for so long but yeah I have lots to say and you guys are the only people I can talk to about it so I'm gonna share all my feelings and I'm I'm not sorry about it if you like this video don't forget to leave a like comment down below and subscribe to my channel I cannot wait to hear all you guys feelings and opinions on this book if you've read it if you want to read it if you're reading it with me and I will see you guys in the next episode bye